Hey graphic designers, this is Mr. Greland here, and I'm going to go over uh, the kinds of things that you can do inside of your design principles project to create these different design principles. So I'm in the middle of creating mine. In the last video you saw me do scale, but I just want to talk a little bit about what you're seeing here. So inside of scale, I made two objects. So one that's bigger than the other, and then to reinforce the size relationship, I did these kind of bracket things that indicate like how big something is and wrote size relationship to it. Now in proportion, uh, it's the size relationships of one part to the whole. So you want to think about the whole head is an object and the eyes are a certain size compared to that object or they're in a certain location compared to the whole size of it. And so if you can find pictures and or create pictures that demonstrate proportions of the size of one thing compared to the size of the whole thing, that's going to help um, your poster. And since I have more negative space off to the side here, I'm going to create some more pictures or find some more pictures that demonstrate proportion. Now last time I was working inside of my proportion folder that I made or group by clicking this. And so everything that I do inside of proportion, I'm trying to create in my proportion folder. So I'm going to make a new layer here. And I'm going to just create some circles here. I'm going to fill each circle with the different color object. Now it's okay if it goes outside of my boundary here because I'm going to delete it afterwards. So I'm going to select a color. I'm going to use my paint bucket here which is underneath the gradient tool. I'm going to click and fill. I'm going to put it underneath my rectangle and then I'm going to do I'm going to have it contract for me, so I'm going to go to Select, I'm going to go to Modify, Contract, and let's do 20 pixels. And I'm going to choose a new color, slightly darker. Do it. I'm going to keep doing this. So Select, Modify, Contract, and then Select, Modify, Contract. Select, Modify, Contract. And I'm just changing my color a little bit each time. Select, Modify, Contract. And finally, we're going to do just some black in there. All right, now I have all this stuff on the outside. So I'm going to just get my rectangular marquee tool. I'm going to go up to the edge of there. I'm going to hold space to kind of move it so I get it right on the edge. And even if I go a little bit on the inside of my border, that's okay because layer seven is behind. So the size of these compared to the size of the whole thing. So the size of this diamond compared to the size of the whole thing. All of that is part of my proportion. Now movement, I don't need these things here so I'm gonna find my shape layer. All these layers that I don't really need. I'm gonna just delete all of those.
and highlight all of those and delete those as well since I don't really need those. And there's one more layer. A trick for finding which layer has the thing you're looking for is turning the eyeball on and off. So I'm turning the eyeball on and off for layer four, that's telling me that that's where those lines are. I can get rid of those lines and delete those. I'm gonna make a new group. We're gonna call this movement. And inside of movement, we have actually two things. So creating the illusion of action or creating composition that moves the viewer's eye. So there's always, 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 always going to be movement in a picture because anytime you show people a picture, their eyes are going to look at it. And as soon as their eyes look at it, they look at certain parts of the picture, first, second, and third. So there's always the principle of movement in a picture. I'm going to search for a picture this time, okay? And I like to search black and white photography. Um, one, there's a lot more unity in black and white photography. And if I ever want to like change the blending mode, it's going to work really nice with my background shapes. So it might be something that you look for as well. And I'm going to type in movement, okay? And here we have some really cool ones. So we have like this person moving to hit a ball. We have these dancers in different poses. Yeah, these are pretty cool. So I'm going to right click, copy that, paste it in there. And I want to make sure that my pictures, if I'm going to put more than one picture in there, that they're the same size, okay? Easy way to do this is to size them down and then just make them the same size as each other. Sometimes that's a little bit harder to make sure they line up just right. You can try using rulers bringing a ruler down and then it'll actually snap to the edge. So for instance, these are actually not aligned properly. So this layer needs to get a little bit smaller. And this layer needs to get a little bit bigger. And I click and drag these rulers down so that I can make sure that things are aligned. I could also use my rectangular marquee tool and just trim off whatever I don't want to use. And I just hit the backspace there to delete that little bit off. I like the way this is looking. I'm going to try changing it to multiply so I get some of that blue coming through. Oh, I like that even better, okay? I'm gonna move on to the next one, balance. Now there's three types of balance in here. And so we wanna make sure that we have those labels down below. So we're gonna make our next group, balance. Oh, accidentally put that inside the movement folder. And we have regular and let's see I'm gonna make that smaller and highlight the text and set that to 12 points that's gonna be my font size for the detail stuff regular random and progressive so I'm gonna actually type in 
I made duplicates of them. You can do that with Control J. Um, I held Alt and used the Move tool. And that made a duplicate. I'm going to call this Progressive. Not the insurance, but a type of rhythm. Now I have these three things here and they, they're going to go into the balance there, um, but I want them kind of lined up. Well, in the move tool, in the sub menu here, I have these alignment things, so I can align them according to one of their positions. So let's say random, okay, that's always sticking up there, and I want it to be on the same line. I'm going to highlight by clicking and holding shift on the keyboard, I can highlight my three, um, my three labels there, and then I'm going to click on one of these alignments. Align with the bottom edge, the top edge, or the middle. I'm going to align with the bottom edges. Okay, so now that puts them all in a line. Let's say I want to make sure that they're distributed equally. and align them with the vertical centers. So we can actually go to distribute them equally. So under the layer menu, you can go down next to align, you can go down to distribute. And I'm gonna distribute with the horizontal centers. And you see how it just shifted the random over a little bit? So now, these three labels are exactly the same width apart. That really helps my alignment score. Now let's go find some pictures of balance. So I'm gonna type in balance, and I'm gonna type in regular, okay? Now regular, oh, and my label is wrong. Oh my gosh, what am I thinking? It's not regular balance. That's a style of rhythm. It should be formal. This shouldn't be random. This should be informal. And that's not progressive. That should be radial. Oh my goodness, guys, I am so sorry for that.